Welcome. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. We're going to continue on Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. We're looking at this in light of the fact that sometimes we get confused between law and grace. We think law was for the Old Testament, grace is for the New Testament, when in fact there was actually grace in the Old Testament, though there is greater grace in the New. And there is law in the New Testament, though it is also a greater law. It's not the law of Moses, but it's the law of Christ, as Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. We're not under the law of Moses, but we are under the law of Christ. Christ. So we've already looked at verse 17 and 18, but we want to go back and look at verse 18 again. Now, these are the passages that are, this is a passage that is often used by those in the Hebraic Roots movement to say that Jesus was telling us that we should keep all the commands of the law of Moses. But that's not what he's teaching as we've been looking at. Let's look at verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. So the Old Testament, both the law and the prophets are not going to be uh, simply taught by Jesus. It doesn't say that he came to teach them, he came to enforce them. No, it says that he came to fulfill them. That is that what he is going to teach is going to be the fulfillment, the reality that the Old Testament scriptures pointed to only in a type and a shadow. Particularly when we look at the Old Testament, we see that there are certain commands that have a semblance or a, a, a likeness to righteousness, but it's not a perfect righteousness. For example, Jesus teaches in Mark chapter or Matthew chapter 19 that God, through Moses, allowed divorce in the Old Testament, not because that was his plan or his perfect standard of righteousness, but because of the hardness of the hearts of the people of Israel. And so he allowed it because they had not yet been born again, received the Holy Spirit of God, had the law of God written on their heart, and so they were still walking according to the flesh. So he gave them a compromised law so that they could continue to walk into it, walk in it, so he wouldn't have to destroy them too quickly until Christ came and brought salvation to both Jew and Gentile. So we see that that was only a type and a shadow in the Old Testament. The, the commands are the, the, the preaching of the prophets, the, the commands in the law of Moses. These were only a type and a shadow. Jesus came to fulfill them, to make something real that was only pointed to by the Old Testament law. Verse 18, for truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Now again, those in the Hebraic Roots movement will try to say, see, he's saying that every single dot and every single tittle of the law of Moses must be obeyed. That's not what he said. He doesn't say that not one dot and one mark will pass from the law, but all will be obeyed, and I am here to teach all of them. That's not what he said. He said that he, until all be fulfilled. So what Jesus is saying here is that as long as this earth remains, as long as uh, you know the heavens and the earth remain until he makes a new heavens and new earth, He's saying that the law of Moses, including the prophets, including the Psalms, is all going to be profitable for doctrine, for correction, and for rebuke. Let's look at that if we flip over to, uh, to let's see here, to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We read this, what Paul said, which is the same teaching that Paul Jesus is bringing us right here. So Paul was a good student of his master. So he says this, starting in verse 15, and that since childhood you have known the holy scriptures. Now, which scriptures did he have? He had the Old Testament. He had the Psalms, the prophets, and the law, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. So the Old Testament scriptures are able to make us wise because they point to Jesus. As Jesus said in John chapter 5, that the scriptures point to me, that the law points to me. He said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because in them you think that you have life, but they are that they which testify to me, but you refuse to come to me that you might have life. So the scriptures point to Jesus Christ so that we can have salvation through faith in him. That's what the Old Testament scriptures are teaching. Verse 16, all scripture... Old Testament scripture is being talked about at this point. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be com complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So in the Old Testament law, as Jesus has already taught us, in the Old Testament law, there is a righteous standard. Again, it's not a perfect standard, but it was a pointing to that perfect standard that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So if we are walking in the commands of Jesus Christ, we will fulfill every righteous standard in the Old Testament law. As we see in Romans chapter 2, verse 26, that the righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled in us. As it says in, in chapter 8, verse 4, Romans, 
It says that the, the righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, because we have the spirit of God writing the law of God in our heart, and we walk according to the righteous commands of Jesus Christ, which fulfill the Old Testament pictures and types and shadows of righteousness in the law of Moses. So going back here to Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, so as long as this earth remains, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all be fulfilled. In other words, the Old Testament scriptures are always going to be useful to make us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The Old Testament scriptures are for use in the Christian life. This is the one of the reasons we're doing this uh the series as we're going through the different theological systems, understanding the Old Testament, looking in here to the, the law of Christ. The reason we're doing this is because a lot of times, especially for me, when I first got saved 30 years ago and I came to read the Bible, the Old Testament made no sense to me. I did not know how to apply it to my life. And so I kind of stuck in the New Testament. But the Old Testament scriptures also belong to believers that have the spirit of God and they are useful for teaching us about Jesus Christ. We know that they are written in the Old Testament context, the historical context. And so we understand that they were a national law given to uh, the nation of Israel because God promised that he would make that nation great. And then through that nation would bring salvation. He would bring Christ through them. We understand the Old Testament context, and then we did a series on that, but now we also want to understand that it's not just the Old Testament context, but it's the prophetic message of the Old Testament that is fulfilled in the teaching and the life and the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that teaching in the Old Testament is a prophecy to us, so it is useful for us. So Jesus is simply saying this, the Old Testament scriptures are not to be thrown out, we're not to be unhitched from the Old Testament, but the Old Testament scriptures belong to Christians and they lead us to Jesus Christ. Let's look at a couple other uh, passages here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is a, a warning passage for people that have, uh, you know, already become believers, but then they're told to watch out and not turn back to their old ways, as it says in verse uh, let's see, 12, it says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. But what it started off by doing was talking about Moses and the people of Israel coming through the Red Sea. They were baptized into Moses in the Red Sea. They came out. They were brought into the wilderness. And then many of them died in the wilderness before they came into the promised land because they sinned against God. And then what Paul is going to say is these are all an example for us. If we look at verse, uh, let's see, start in verse 11. Now these things happened. To them, for examples, they were written down as an admonition to us upon whom the end of the ages have, have come. The Bible says that in the last days, God has spoken to us by his son. So since the coming of Jesus Christ, we've been in the last days. Oftentimes when we think about the last days, we think of, you know, that last generation before Jesus comes. But actually when the Bible is talking about the last days, it's talking about it from the, the perspective, the Old Testament perspective that they were looking forward towards the coming of Jesus Christ and the era of the Messiah. And so since Jesus came, as it said in Acts chapter two, that in these last days, God has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And so the last days have come and we are those, the, the believers are those that are living in the last days, filled with the spirit of God and walking according to the commands of Jesus Christ. And it says this, now all all these things happen to them, for example. So everything in the Old Testament is a type and a shadow. What happened in the nation of Israel, uh, God was working in that nation in a particular way, but he was also working and sovereignly controlling the history so that it could be something that would guide us into faith and obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So they happened as examples. They were written down as an admonition to us. Now, were these things written down for the benefit of the Old Testament people? Well, they happened to the Old Testament people, and then they were written down. So yeah, they were written down for future generations. For example, David could read about the, the time that they spent in the wilderness. Uh, King David could read that, so it was something that was helpful to him. But in particular, the Old Testament scriptures were written down. They were written down as an admonition to us upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So the Old Testament scriptures are in a, a very uh, specific way made particularly for Christians. Because they are not only the Old Testament type and shadow, but in the New Testament, we have the understanding of what those things are talking about, namely Jesus Christ. Uh, we can see this if we flip over to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We read, let's see, in verse 15 and 16, it says this, uh, let's start in verse 14. Instead, their minds were blinded for until this day, the same veils veil remains unlifted in the reading of the old covenant, the veil which was done away with in Christ. So 
When people read the Old Testament and they don't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't have the apostolic teaching, they are just reading the Old Testament context, they can understand what God was doing with Israel. They can understand about Sabbaths. They can understand about new moons, about uh, feast days. They can understand all those things. But that's just a rationalistic understanding. A believer, an unbeliever, an atheist, anybody can go read it in that way. But the only way to understand the mystery or the uh, the prophetic meaning of the Old Testament law, the Old Testament scriptures, is to first come to Christ, as he's going to go on and say in verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is on their hearts. So when somebody, whether they're from a dispensationalist camp or whether they are from a uh, Hebraic roots camp or whether they're just an unbeliever coming to the Old Testament scriptures and they say, we've got to read it in context, historical context only, they're misunderstanding that there are two meanings to the Old Testament scripture. There's the historic meaning. There's the prophetic meaning. Verse 16, nevertheless, when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So when somebody turns to Jesus Christ, they receive the spirit of God. They understand the apostolic teaching. They're able to look back to the Old Testament scriptures and are able to understand what the scriptures were written about. Now, what were they written about? We saw it. We've seen it many times in Luke chapter 24. We see what the scriptures are about. If I asked somebody, what is it, what's written in the Old Testament? They would, and they went back to the historical context. They would say, well, uh, God chose this nation through Abraham. He made a great nation. He brought them out of Egypt. He gave them Sabbaths and laws and dietary laws. Uh, and he promised to bring them a Messiah. And they would read all this and they would understand, okay, that, that's true. But they wouldn't understand what Jesus taught us. In verse 44, Luke 24, 44, he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So he's saying those scriptures were written about him. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, thus it is written. And accordingly, it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached to, in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So what's the Old Testament about? It's about Jesus Christ dying and rising again. The law, the prophets, the Psalms. It's about Jesus dying and rising again. And then his name, through his name, forgiveness of sins and the repentance of sins being preached to all nations in his name. So that's what the Old Testament law is about. But we can only understand that when the veil is removed because we've turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now by the spirit of God, we're able to understand the Old Testament scriptures. So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's see, did I mark it out here? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. This is written about the Old Testament prophets. All right, let's go ahead and start in verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that should come to you have inquired and searched diligently. So, for example, Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 53, when he's talking about the suffering servant bearing the sin of the people, bearing the sin of God's people. Oh, I've got a wasp friend here. Hopefully he's friendly. So, uh, and he's prophesying about those things and he's wondering, what is this about the suffering of the Messiah? Who is this that's going to suffer this way? What does it mean that he's going to be raised up and, he's and all mouths are going to be shut? What, what is this talking about? So he questioned the Lord, what is this about? And this verse is inquired and searched diligently, seeking the events, verse 11, seeking the events in the time the spirit of Christ who was within them signified when he foretold the sufferings and the glories of sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. Verse 12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you concerning the things which are now reported to you by those who have preached the gospel to you through the Holy Spirit who was sent from heaven things into which in the angels desire to look. So the prophets were prophesying, but they didn't know exactly what they were talking about. They knew the historical context of their day, but they didn't understand the mysteries that they were speaking. And they were told by the Spirit of God, God told them that you are serving those that are at the ends of the ages because they are going to understand this when these things are fulfilled. So we understand that the Old Testament scriptures are not fully understood until the fulfillment takes place in Jesus Christ. The, the law of Moses and the commands that were given, you know, there's some strange commands. If you look into the law, it tells you, okay, whenever you 
uh, whenever you uh, go and you fight war and then you kill a family and you capture a slave girl and then you marry her, uh, you know, and you've shaved her head and all this kind of stuff and you're reading like, whoa, what is this about? We realize, okay, this is only a type and a shadow. This is not the reality of God's eternal standard. It is only something that was given in a compromised form to be able to point to something in the future. What was it pointing to? It was pointing to Jesus Christ, his teaching, the Sermon on the Mount, and all of his commands and teachings. So if we turn over to uh, Ephesians chapter 3, we can see Paul mentions this also. Verse, start in verse 2. You have heard of the administration of the grace of God which was given me for you, how by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have written, Briefly already. So the mystery is something in the Old Testament was hidden, but in the New Testament is revealed. Verse 4. By which when you read it, you may understand the knowledge, my knowledge of the mystery of Christ. So the mystery was that Jesus Christ would be Lord of heaven and earth. We read it back in Ephesians chapter 1. It said in verse 8. And he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself as a plan for the fullness of time, that's the end of the ages, to unite all things in Christ which are in heaven and earth, that he becomes Lord of heaven and earth with all authority over all things. So going back to Ephesians 3, it says, which in other generations, verse 5, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So in the new covenant, the apostles and the prophets received a revelation and understanding to the mystery of the things that the Old Testament prophecies, uh, prophet, prophets long to understand. Verse 6, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, fellow members, and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. As it said in Luke 24, that the gospel would be proclaimed to all nations and repentance and forgiveness of sins would come to all through him. So going back to Matthew chapter 5. We're able to read in verse 18, For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, as long as this earth endures, not one dot or one mark will pass from the law until all be fulfilled. The scriptures of the Old Testament, law, prophets, psalms, they are useful for us as believers. They are able to lead us and make us wise for faith through uh, sa salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. They testify about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. They testify of the righteous standard that he uh, was coming to proclaim, that he fulfills the law of Moses because he brings in God's perfect and eternal righteousness. He fulfills the righteous requirements of the law in his commands. So I hope this has been helpful to you, that we understand what Jesus is teaching and what the apostles taught elsewhere. God bless.